James Cagney was an amazing actor, known for his great performances in different types of roles. He had a way of keeping people interested with his charm and strong presence on screen. Feel free to share your own stories in the comments below. And keep watching because there are some interesting, surprising, and sad facts about him in this video. James Cagney, a legendary actor, starred in numerous iconic films. Some of his must-watch movies include The Public Enemy, where he portrays a ruthless gangster, Angels with Dirty Faces, featuring him as a charismatic yet conflicted criminal, and Yankee Doodle Dandy, in which he shines as the entertainer George M. Cohen. For those new to his work, White Heat is a gripping crime drama showcasing his intense performance as a volatile criminal mastermind. Another recommendation is Each Dawn I Die, a compelling prison drama highlighting his versatility as an actor. With a career spanning various genres, James Cagney's films continue to captivate audiences with their timeless charm and memorable performances. Renowned for his memorable performance in the Roaring Twenties, he took a break from tough guy roles for 10 years before making a comeback with White Heat in 1949. Instead of playing Robin Hood as planned, he split from Warner Brothers, delaying the movie's release by three years. He left a lasting impression in The Public Enemy, especially with a scene where he pushes a grapefruit into someone's face, which one fan admired daily. Throughout his career, he showed he could do many different kinds of roles, from serious dramas to funny comedies. Even though he was known for playing tough guys, he also showed off his talent in musicals. Whether he was dancing or giving a powerful speech, people loved watching him on screen. James Cagney didn't just play roles, he became a symbol of never giving up, inspiring actors for years to come. In a classic film, a talented actor portrayed a famous entertainer alongside his real sister, who played a character named Josie. Interestingly, although Josie is depicted as the younger sister in the movie, she was actually the older sibling. Although the actor was initially cast in another movie, he later dropped out, and another actor took over the role. He had a close bond with his pals, forming what was affectionately dubbed the Irish Mafia. They could often be spotted enjoying a quiet drink and conversation at various Hollywood nightclubs. Their social circle included several other well-known actors, forming a tight-knit group in the industry. Navigating the world of fame and success can be a daunting journey for anyone. It's a path filled with highs and lows, triumphs and challenges. Such was the story of an actor whose life unfolded like a movie script, complete with struggles and victories. Born into a tough neighborhood, he faced adversity from a young age, which left lasting scars on his emotional well-being. The pressures of Hollywood only exacerbated his inner turmoil, leading to battles with anxiety and depression. In the midst of the competitive entertainment industry, he found solace in his craft, using his performances as a means to express the complexities of his inner world. Despite setbacks and disappointments, he persevered, delivering memorable portrayals that resonated with audiences worldwide. His journey serves as a reminder that behind the glitz and glamour, even the most successful individuals grapple with their demons. It underscores the importance of seeking support and prioritizing mental health, regardless of one's stature or achievements. In the end, his story endures, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the power of perseverance. And though he may no longer be with us, his impact lives on, a reminder of the human experience in all its intricacies. Growing up in the rough east side of New York City, he was pushed by his mother to take up boxing, thinking it was important for surviving their tough neighborhood. While she watched him spar with local kids, she stopped him when he wanted to become a professional boxer, challenging him herself. He gave up the idea then. If there was ever a movie made about his life, he already chose Michael J. Fox to play him. During the making of Angels with Dirty Faces, he dealt with the rowdy dead-end kids. When one of them went too far, he quickly showed them who was boss. This moment reinforced his reputation as someone not to mess with, both on and off the screen, leaving a lasting impression on Hollywood history. His journey from the gritty streets to Hollywood stardom remains a story of inspiration, showing how resilience and determination can overcome tough times. In old movie clips, a performer wowed the crowd with a lively act of Give My Regards to Broadway in a film called That's Dancing. This person was supposed to be introduced by Sammy Davis Jr., but that plan changed suddenly. This unexpected turn put him in the spotlight and led to big things. He also encouraged war hero Audie Murphy to try acting, showing not just his own talent, but also his ability to see potential in others. Before becoming a famous actor, he worked as a waiter, learning and waiting for his big break. Despite appearing ordinary, he had a lot of talent just waiting to be discovered. 
He went from being a waiter to becoming a big star in Hollywood, showing that with hard work and belief in yourself, you can achieve anything. This person's story is more than just about movies. It's about the American dream. It shows that if you keep trying and believe in yourself, you can reach great heights. It's a story that will inspire people for a long time. While often credited to him, he never actually said the famous line, you dirty rat, in any of his movies. In the film Lady Killer, there's a scene where Mee Clark's character learns about grapefruit from a brochure reminiscent of a memorable moment in The Public Enemy where Cagney's character pushes a grapefruit into her face. His role as George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy landed him at number 6 on Premier Magazine's list of 100 Greatest Performances of All Time. He showed his acting skills in various roles, making a lasting impression on the world of cinema. Amid the glittering lights of Hollywood, one star's journey stands out for its unexpected twists and genuine passion. From his early days in the Screen Actors Guild to his eventual presidency, he made a big impact in Tinseltown. His role in Angels with Dirty Faces wasn't just acting, it was a heartfelt tribute to a childhood friend's tragic story. This personal connection added depth to his performance, touching audiences worldwide. One day, while sailing near Catalina Island, he stumbled upon a film shoot by chance. Little did he realize, this random encounter would open doors for him in the film Mutiny on the Bounty. Though he started as an extra, his brief appearance delighted viewers, showcasing his versatility even in small roles. Such stories highlight the unpredictable nature of his Hollywood journey, leaving a lasting impression on cinema. Starting his journey in the spotlight, a talented performer showcased his skills in a musical called Cagney. The show premiered at the Florida stage and quickly became a hit, selling out performances and earning rave reviews. His role as George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy won him an Oscar, alongside his co-star Joan Leslie, making history in movies. Another notable role was as Tom Powers in The Public Enemy, which earned him praise as one of the greatest characters ever by Premiere Magazine. His work on stage and screen continues to be celebrated, breathing life into memorable characters that deeply connect with audiences worldwide. His presence on stage or screen always held audiences spellbound. He left a lasting impact on entertainment history, inspiring future generations. In the world of acting, some stars follow unconventional paths. Take, for example, one actor who never took formal lessons. He made a memorable mark as George M. Cohan in a famous film. Interestingly, in that movie, the character he played claimed to support a different political party than the real person did. Despite playing a Democrat on screen, the real George M. Cohan was actually a Republican who disliked President Franklin D. Roosevelt's policies. He even put off meeting Roosevelt for years, despite being honored with a prestigious award. Another interesting moment in the actor's career was his first time attending the premiere of one of his own movies. This was a big deal for him. Through his varied roles and unique acting style, this actor left a lasting impact on the film industry. From receiving a prestigious award from the president to being recognized as one of the greatest movie stars ever, this individual has left a lasting impression on American history. When a famous director picked him for a role over someone else, it showed how much trust people had in his talent. He wasn't just good at one type of role, he could play all sorts of characters, from tough guys in gangster movies to characters in Shakespeare plays. Some magazine even ranked him as the 11th best movie star ever, which goes to show how much people still love his work today. His movies continue to inspire and entertain audiences, proving that his impact on Hollywood will never be forgotten. This is the story of a man whose work in movies will always be remembered. In one movie, he played Rocky Sullivan, a tough character from a story by Roland Brown. Originally, the plan was for Brown to write and direct the film, but things changed when Warner Brothers got involved. Even with the switch up, the heart of the story stayed true, thanks to writers John Wexley and Warren Duff and director Michael Curtiz. Then, in another movie, he acted as C.R. McNamara. There's a scene in this movie that's memorable because it's similar to a famous moment from his past film where he used a grapefruit as a weapon. In this new movie, the fruit was used again in a funny way. After many successful movies, his influence was still felt. He was even honored with his own stamp, part of the Legends of Hollywood series, showing how much he meant to the film world. Amidst the pages of his autobiography, a gripping tale unfolds a mafia plot aimed at ending his life during his presidency at the Screen Actors Guild. At that time, he staunchly resisted mob infiltration, and it took the intervention of a well-connected friend, George Raft, to thwart the sinister scheme. This incident marked a chapter in his determination to safeguard the entertainment industry. 
Following the filming of 123, a sense of disillusionment enveloped him, leading to a two-decade hiatus until a brief return in Ragtime in 1981. The negative experiences from the former film lingered, casting a profound influence on his decision to step away from the screen. Throughout his theatrical journey, the challenge of stage fright haunted him. Before each performance, he confronted this vulnerability head-on, despite his acclaim. It served as a reminder of his unwavering dedication to his craft. In the realm of showbiz, challenges and triumphs shaped his narrative, from facing off against the Mafia's sinister plot to navigating the complexities of stage fright. These experiences etched a unique story, demonstrating his commitment to the industry. In one memorable scene from 123, he finds himself pursued through the streets of West Berlin, a situation reminiscent of the gangster films of the late 1930s and early 1940s, where cars were characters in their own right. His favorite film, The Strawberry Blonde, showcases his personal preference amidst a prolific career. Despite his fame, he displayed humility by refusing payment for his tap routine in The Seven Little Foys, spending 10 days mastering the steps without seeking compensation. His dedication to his craft was evident in every role he undertook. Despite facing challenges in his career, he always aimed to make his roles authentic and meaningful, earning him respect from both audiences and fellow actors. His work continues to be remembered and appreciated for its lasting impact on the film industry. In a memorable moment, he shared an old stage trick with his colleague Mee Clark. Instead of causing discomfort when he grabbed her hair, she reacted by grabbing his wrist, showing her instinctive response. Towards the end of his life, he mentioned a young man named Mike Fox who bore a resemblance to him. Although no movie depicted his life, Fox honored him with a special show called Top of the World. He often left work early, pretending to be sick, so that the underpaid extras and crew could get extra pay, revealing his caring nature. This act of kindness made him popular not only among his colleagues, but also among people outside the industry. These stories reveal the kind and generous person behind his famous roles. He was loved not only for his acting, but also for his decency and kindness. In Hollywood history, he is remembered not just as a talented actor, but also as a symbol of humanity amidst the glitz and glamour. In a famous movie, a well-known actor played a role that celebrated patriotism. Interestingly, his brother suggested him for the part to highlight his political background. The actor, who was experienced in live performances, agreed to the role, showing his versatility. During the filming of another movie, he faced a challenging situation with a group of young actors. However, he managed the situation gracefully, leaving a strong impression on one of the actors. This incident showcased his ability to handle unexpected problems on set. The peak of his career arrived when he won an Oscar for his outstanding performance at a film about the patriotic character. This achievement was particularly impressive because he competed against strong actors from other well-regarded movies. It solidified his reputation as a legend in the movie industry. In summary, this actor's journey in movies was defined by his talent and his knack for dealing with challenges. His portrayal of the patriotic character and his success in that film underscored his lasting impact on Hollywood. In the movie Yankee Doodle Dandy, he played the role of Georgian Cohan and left a strong impression. Cohan himself, after watching a private screening, said, What a performance to follow. However, his time on set wasn't entirely smooth. He had conflicts with S.Z. Sokol, feeling overshadowed by the character actor. Despite complaining to the director, Michael Curtis, nothing changed, leading him to refuse to work with Sokol again. Interestingly, he is the great-grandfather of actress Fiona Cagney. It's fascinating how family connections can span generations in the entertainment industry. This story shows the behind-the-scenes complexities in filmmaking. Such family ties add layers of interest to Hollywood's history, highlighting the ongoing legacies that continue through generations. It's a tribute to the lasting influence of those contributing to cinematic art, leaving lasting marks on audiences and industry insiders alike. Thus, James Cagney's story reminds us of the challenges faced by performers and celebrates their lasting influence on the silver screen. He had two grandchildren from his daughter Kathleen Bernie Lee and Christina May Thomas. In the film Yankee Doodle Dandy, he portrayed George M. Cohan, while George Barbier took on the role of theatrical producer Abraham L. Erlanger. Barbier had previous Broadway experience, having appeared in two plays produced by Erlanger in the 1920s. He also shared the screen with the real George M. Cohan in The Phantom President. Another Broadway production, Penny Arcade, featured him alongside James Cagney and Joan Blondell. Cagney and Blondell made their film debuts in the adaptation of this play titled Sinner's Holiday. 
He was widely known for being intensely private and avoiding the Hollywood social scene. In a famous movie scene, an actor took over 30 tries to get his lines right because he kept mixing up the words. This actor was highly regarded by famous directors like Steven Spielberg, who considered him one of the best actors ever. In another movie, a scene featuring him was later used in a commercial with Elton John, showing how his work continues to be appreciated even decades later. These stories show how dedicated he was to his craft and how his talent still resonates today. They give us a glimpse into his perfectionism on set and the recognition he received from top directors. This shows just how influential he was in the world of cinema. In old Hollywood, there were some interesting connections between actors. For example, in one movie, there was a tense moment between the main actor and the director. It turns out the director was pretty tough on everyone. Another actor, Cameron Mitchell, not only acted alongside the main actor, but also wrote a movie for him. In another film, the main actor starred alongside two other famous actors, Pat O'Brien and Humphrey Bogart. What's curious is that all three of them were born in the same year. It's neat to think about how these actors, all born around the same time, made their own paths in the movie world. It just shows how talent and personality mixed to make some really memorable movies back then. Imagine a time when an actor's dedication was put to the test, quite literally. In a memorable moment from a classic film, he faced an unexpected punch that broke his tooth. Yet, he didn't falter, staying in character and finishing the scene without missing a beat. His journey to fame started with tap dancing from a young age, where his talent shone brightly. Every step he took seemed to demand attention, drawing audiences in with his rhythmic skill and powerful stage presence. His acting style, a mix of intensity and charm, left a deep impression on those who followed him. Icons like Clint Eastwood and Malcolm McDowell have credited him as their main inspiration for pursuing acting. He effortlessly moved between tough roles and more nuanced characters, showcasing his versatile talent. His name became synonymous with excellence in the entertainment world, setting a high standard for aspiring actors. Truly, he was a giant in his field, leaving a lasting impact on the history of cinema. In a beloved old movie, he played a captain who was different from the usual Navy types. Even though there was some pushback at first, they eventually agreed to work together thanks to a director's connections. In another film, he acted as a messy drinker to meet rules about what could be shown on screen. When they filmed scenes with gunfire, they didn't rely on fancy effects, just skilled shooters. He faced difficulties, but still delivered memorable performances and famous roles. He put a lot of effort into each part, leaving a strong impression on movies. Despite facing challenges, he found a place for himself in the industry, giving performances that people all over the world remember. His commitment to acting showed in every scene, earning praise and respect from others in the field and fans everywhere. His ability to play many different kinds of characters allowed him to take on a wide range of roles, from tough gangsters to charming leaders, each one showing his special charm and appeal. Throughout the 1930s and early 1940s, he starred in 11 movies alongside Frank McHugh, forming a memorable duo on screen. Their performances were full of energy, captivating audiences. In one movie called Footlight Parade, something interesting happened. Guy Kibbe and Arthur Hole's characters took him to watch a film called The Telegraph Trail, featuring John Wayne and McHugh. This time McHugh, who usually played Wayne's sidekick, teamed up with him as partners in the story. This showed how flexible he could be as an actor, smoothly transitioning from one role to another. Later on, he took on the role of George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy, which he performed excellently and was praised for. He even played the role again for a radio show, proving his talent in bringing famous characters to life. These collaborations not only showed how versatile he was, but also how well he could adapt to different kinds of roles. From being the funny sidekick to taking on more serious parts, he showed his skill in various movie genres. His work continues to be loved by audiences, leaving a mark on Hollywood's history. In one of the most memorable moments of the film, a character sits on his mother's lap a scene praised for its emotional depth. This moment, suggested by the director, was initially credited to the actor who portrayed the character. However, it was later clarified that the director came up with the idea. Despite the confusion, the portrayal by both actors was commended for its authenticity. The director, who had a political shift in his life, actively supported a prominent politician and even received a eulogy from him years later. Another actor from the film suggested that the lead deserved an award for his performance, highlighting the impact of the character's display of vulnerability and aggression. 
This scene between the character and his mother captivated audiences and critics, showcasing the lead actor's versatility. It's a testament to the collaborative effort of everyone involved that such a powerful scene was brought to life, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. In 1924, he tried to make it big in Hollywood, but faced challenges because he didn't have an agent to help him. He didn't give up though. He worked hard and waited for his chance. It finally came with the movie 123, where he said a famous line that people remembered. But it was his work with Humphrey Bogart and Angels with Dirty Faces that really made him famous. Together, they brought something special to the movies, making people love their performances. Their partnership was important in the history of movies. Despite facing rejection for his political beliefs, he didn't give up on his dreams. Initially set for a smaller role, his talent shone during rehearsals, earning him the lead part in a movie. His portrayal of a tough guy and the public enemy impressed everyone. In Love Me or Leave Me, he played a layered character, drawing from his earlier gangster roles. This movie echoed themes from his past work, showing his versatility as an actor. Each role he took pushed the limits of his acting ability, leaving a lasting impact on the film industry. His work continues to inspire actors and filmmakers today. In 1973, he was offered the title role in the comedy Harry and Tonto, but he, who was then 74 years old and had not starred in a feature film since 1961, did not want to come out of retirement. The role and the Best Actor Oscar would go to Art Carney. As Cody Jarrett in White Heat, he caused genuine shock and fear in his co-star Virginia Mayo by deliberately missing his cue during a scene. In 123, Joan Crawford protested the movie's Coca-Cola connection, leading to a final scene where he buys four bottles of Coke from a vending machine, with the last bottle being another brand, Pepsi. In a classic film, he portrayed a character known as Marty the Gimp, showing his versatility beyond his typical roles. Despite his tough guy image on screen, he found himself working in a different environment, embracing fatherhood by adopting two children. These additions brought joy to his life away from Hollywood spotlight. Among his extensive list of movies, this particular one stood out as a favorite. It showcased his talent and left a lasting impression on audiences. His life and career reflect his significant contributions to the entertainment industry, demonstrating his versatility and charm as an actor. In the vibrant atmosphere of a movie theater, Chester, joined by C and others, gets absorbed in the telegraph trail. The silver screen not only unfolds an intriguing plot, but also showcases the talents of familiar faces like Frank McHugh. McHugh, who shared the screen with Chester in the telegraph trail, reveals his acting versatility by portraying different characters in both that film and Yankee Doodle Dandy. In the latter, McHugh adds a delightful touch by spontaneously tap dancing down the White House stairs, creating a charming moment. Director William O'Wellman, known for his keen eye, spots McHugh's talent after seeing him in the doorway to hell. Impressed, Wellman cast McHugh in a significant role in The Public Enemy, marking his second venture into the cinematic world. These stories remind us of the connections in Hollywood's golden era, where not only captivating plots, but also the talents behind them left lasting impressions. McHugh's impact on cinema goes beyond any single role or film, making his mark in the industry unforgettable. In a classic film, a notable actor displayed remarkable kindness behind the scenes, leaving a lasting impression on his co-star. During filming, the actor subtly assisted his colleague in maintaining the right position without drawing attention to himself. Despite his intense on-screen persona, he privately shared his poetry, seeking feedback. This actor also starred alongside other famous actors in another film, leading to a collaboration on an iconic script where uncredited revisions were made at his request, enriching the character's depth. These interactions reveal a different side of the actor beyond his on-screen image, showing his generosity and dedication to his craft. In one of his movies, he suggested casting Doris Day, his co-star from a previous film they did together. They had great chemistry on screen, which he thought would make their new movie even better. In another movie, he acted alongside Barton McLean, who often played bad guys. This made their scenes together really interesting because their characters were so different. He thought one of his best movies was Love Me or Leave Me. Many people agree with him. It had drama, romance, and music, which made it really popular. Even today, people still love watching it. It shows how good he was at acting and how he's remembered in Hollywood. Did you know that in a famous movie, an actor played a character who was actually older than the actress playing his mother? Also, it's interesting that his family had roots in both Norway and Ireland. In his last movie with Warner Brothers, he played a role that showed his talent in a new light. He was really good at acting, 
and he made a big impact on movies. In the movie 1, 2, 3, there's a scene where C.R. McNamara, played by him, meets Red Buttons who's doing a great impression of Cagney. It's a fun nod to Cagney's famous roles. Apart from acting, he also got into judo and became really good at it, earning a black belt. Some of his movies like The Public Enemy, Footlight Parade, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and White Heat are considered classics and are even preserved by the Library of Congress. These movies show how talented he was and how much he influenced Hollywood. It's pretty impressive how he's still remembered for his work in the film industry. Approached numerous times for an official biography post-retirement, he consistently declined, firmly guarding his private life and growing more displeased with each request. Yankee Doodle Dandy, in which he starred, holds the 88th spot on the American Film Institute's list of 100 most inspiring movies of all time. In the film Lady Killer, portraying Dan Quigley, he, after dismounting a mechanical horse in Native American attire, found sitting painful. When asked about his peculiar getup, he, fluent in Yiddish, wittily replied, Big Chief East Tut Mir Vayam touches, delicately translating to Big Chief, it hurts my rear end. In a captivating interview, Orson Welles praised him as one of the greatest actors to ever grace the screen. His portrayal of George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy left a lasting mark, earning admiration from both critics and Cohan himself. Despite facing health challenges, he eagerly assisted with the film, giving his full approval to the stellar performance. In another successful movie, he took on the demanding role of Rocky Sullivan in Angels with Dirty Faces. The script had its limitations, but he skillfully improvised on set, breathing life into the scenes. His adaptability and dedication to his craft were evident throughout his career, especially in Angels with Dirty Faces. The film's success can be credited to the talented cast and his commitment to his roles. His ability to overcome challenges and leave a lasting impression on audiences solidify his place as one of the greatest actors of all time. His intuitive understanding of characters and on-screen charisma continue to influence the world of film. In the Roaring Twenties, he portrayed Eddie Bartlett, inspired by bootlegger Larry Fay. Unlike the character he played, Fay was tall with a long jaw. He met a tragic end in 1932 when a dispute at his nightclub led to his demise. The character Panama Smith was based partly on Texas Guinan, Faye's business partner. In 123, he played CR, McNamara. Pamela Tiffin found acting alongside seasoned performers challenging. Legend has it, he aided her by sharing a timeless piece of advice about honesty and acting. In White Heat, he embodied Cody Jarrett. During filming, he was 49, while Virginia Mayo, who played his wife, was significantly younger at 28. In one of his memorable roles, a certain actor played a character named C.R. McNamara in a film titled 123. In that movie, there's a scene where he insists that another character, Otto, should give a wedding present. However, Scarlett, another character, claims that Otto's friends didn't give gifts, but sent money to unemployed cotton pickers in Mississippi instead. This led to some accusations against the actor for having sympathies with certain political beliefs, as he had supported striking cotton workers in the 1930s. Later on, in a different film called White Heat, he portrayed a character named Cody Jarrett, marking his return to a particular studio after another successful film. Tired of certain types of roles, he decided to form a production company with his brother. However, they faced some financial struggles, with only four films released in five years. Despite his initial reluctance, he returned to the studio with some autonomy, but still ended up making the kind of violent film he had previously rejected, stating, it's what people want me to do. In yet another film called Footlight Parade, he played a character named Chester Kent, showcasing his song and dance skills. It was his first time performing a dance on screen, hinting at his later display of talents in another famous film. Throughout his career, the actor faced political scrutiny, financial challenges, and tough decisions about the roles he took. These experiences shaped his journey in the ever-changing world of Hollywood. In White Heat, he portrayed Cody Jarrett, a character deeply etched in the annals of cinematic history. Edmund O'Brien, despite being promised equal billing, found himself denied by the studio's decision, fearing audiences might misconstrue it as a revival of old classics. Interestingly, he once had the opportunity to star in My Fair Lady, but chose to let it slip through his fingers. It was his ingenious idea to infuse Cody with a chilling dose of psychosis, a decision that added layers of complexity to the character. Drawing from personal experiences, he tapped into his father's struggles with alcoholism, mining the depths of human psyche to bring Cody to life on the silver screen. A visit to a mental hospital provided further insights, enriching his portrayal with haunting authenticity. 
Such dedication to craft and depth of character exploration undoubtedly solidify his status as a titan of Hollywood. In one instance, he rebelled against the studio's choices by altering his appearance. To match the image the studio desired, he sported a crew cut in Jimmy the Gent and grew a thin mustache for he was her man. Another time, a friendship blossomed between him and Jack Lemmon, sparked by a clever trick of lemons in a live TV performance. This friendship endured until his passing in 1986. When they met on their way to film Mr. Roberts, Cagney fondly teased Lemon about his old trick, cementing their bond. Additionally, his portrayal of George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy earned him the distinction of being the first actor to win an Academy Award for Best Actor in a Musical Role. In his final days, a project featuring an elderly Wyatt Earp in 1920s Los Angeles was in the works, with him set to take the lead. Notably, his preferred leading lady was Olivia de Havilland. One memorable role saw him as Rocky Sullivan in Angels with Dirty Faces. The Lux Radio Theater broadcasted a 60-minute radio adaptation on May 22, 1939 with him and Pat O'Brien reprising their film roles. Olivia de Havilland held a special place in his professional heart as his favorite leading lady. Their on-screen chemistry was evident, contributing to the success of their collaborations. The proposed project's details remain somewhat elusive, yet the prospect of seeing him as an elderly Wyatt Earp in 1920s Los Angeles adds an intriguing layer to his diverse filmography. Growing up in a diverse neighborhood in New York City, he was exposed to various cultures, including Jewish customs and language. Despite his predominantly Irish and Norwegian heritage, he became fluent in Yiddish, which enabled him to connect with fellow performers from different backgrounds. This linguistic skill proved invaluable as he engaged in conversations with actors like Paul Mooney, Sylvia Sidney, and John Garfield. Interestingly, a notable filmmaker approached him for a role in a famous movie sequel, but he declined despite a personal visit to his Hollywood home. This decision led to the role eventually being played by another actor. In summary, his upbringing in a culturally rich environment shaped his ability to communicate across different communities, influencing both his personal connections and career decisions. In the movie Love Me or Leave Me, he got his third nomination for Best Actor, stealing the spotlight from Doris Day, who everyone thought would also get a nomination. It's interesting that later on, she got her only nod for Best Actress in Pillow Talk. In another film, 123, he cleverly gives a cuckoo clock to Otto Piffle, playing Yankee Doodle, causing Piffle's troubles with the East German police. This is a nod to his role in Yankee Doodle Dandy, where he played George M. Cohan. His life story, shared in his autobiography, talks about his humble beginnings. He used to send most of his early earnings home to his mom. Even as he started making more money, he stayed dedicated to his family, never keeping more than half until his mom passed away. This commitment to his roots and family values shines through in both his personal life and his acting on screen. Through his varied roles, he won the hearts of audiences and made a lasting impact on the history of movies. That's a glimpse into the many talents of the actor James Cagney, who still inspires generations. In the realm of cinema, few have left such a lasting impression as him. His portrayal as George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy earned him high praise, ranking sixth on Premier Magazine's list of the greatest performances ever. He clinched his only Oscar for Best Actor with this role, solidifying his status as one of the finest actors of his era. Not only known for his standout performance in Yankee Doodle Dandy, but he also received nods for Angels with Dirty Faces and Love Me or Leave Me. In the latter, he starred alongside Doris Day, whose talent caught the eye of Alfred Hitchcock, leading to her casting in The Man Who Knew Too Much. Hitchcock was impressed by her dramatic skills showcased in the film, highlighting the caliber of talent present during that period. His work continues to inspire actors and filmmakers today, showcasing his versatility and dedication to his craft. His influence in Hollywood remains strong, leaving a mark that will always be remembered. In the vast world of movies, there was an actor who really connected with people. He got a big break in a film called Yankee Doodle Dandy, where his wife, Bill, played a big part in helping him. In that movie, he played a character named Cohan, blending vaudeville and film perfectly. As he kept acting, he took on new challenges like playing Martin Snyder in Love Me or Leave Me. This was different from the tough guy roles he usually did. It showed how good he was at changing roles and how talented he was as an actor. He didn't just play characters, he made them feel real to the audience. He was good at showing emotions and making people believe in the stories he told on screen. Looking back, we can see that he did a lot for movies. He showed how much he cared about acting and how much he loved it. 
His work still matters today and shows what a great actor he was. In the big story of movie history, his name is a sign of how good movies can be. He was really good at what he did, and people still remember him for it. That's the story of an actor who made a big difference in the movies, and it's still remembered today. In the realm of entertainment, there are individuals whose influence transcends their craft. Take, for instance, a New York City native who rose from humble beginnings to become a legend in the world of acting. His journey began on the stages of vaudeville and Broadway before he made his mark on the silver screen. In one particular movie, his portrayal of a character named Cody Jarrett left an unforgettable impression. During a pivotal scene set in a prison dining room, his spontaneous outburst took everyone by surprise. The director wisely decided to keep the cameras rolling, capturing the raw emotion and intensity of the moment. This actor's talent and improvisational skills have left an enduring legacy in Hollywood. His contributions to film history are undeniable, shaping the way we view and appreciate cinema. It's clear that his influence will continue to be felt for generations to come. In the face of missing out on a big role in a famous movie, he didn't let it bring him down. Instead, he found success in other areas. He was the boss of the actors group in Hollywood for a couple of years during the 1940s, which was a big deal. Even though he could have easily been tempted by the glitz and glam of showbiz, he stayed true to his wife for a whopping 64 years. There's this one time when another famous person tried to get him to cheat on his wife, but he said no. This shows he was a really loyal guy, even when things got tricky. So, James Cagney wasn't just about acting, he was about sticking to his values and being faithful. Embarking on a very journey through different jobs, our protagonist took on many interesting roles early in life. From being a junior architect to doing jobs like delivering copies, looking after books, and helping guests at a hotel, he had quite the mix of experiences. In the world of movies, he showed he could do different things, even being a draftsman and working as a night guard. But it was his role as CR, McNamara, in the movie 1, 2, 3 that people remember most. In one scene, he famously threatened someone with half a grapefruit like a scene from The Public Enemy. This scene became famous outside of the movie, even inspiring a Madonna song called White Heat on her album True Blue. He was good at playing different characters and making scenes memorable, which made him a legend in movies. His work continues to be important, showing how storytelling can affect people in different ways. In five movies that were up for the Best Picture Oscar, he made a big impression. Those movies were Here Comes the Navy, A Midsummer Night's Dream, Mutiny on the Bounty, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and Mr. Roberts. Only Mutiny on the Bounty won the big award. He played Martin Snyder in Love Me or Leave Me. And something to sing about, he acted alongside Mill Alderman. Even with a broken rib, he danced his heart out as George M. Cohan and Yankee Doodle Dandy. He always put everything into his acting, no matter what challenges he faced. He could dance and act in a way that really grabbed your attention. He played all kinds of roles, showing how versatile he was. He left a lasting impression on the movies, and his work will keep inspiring people for a long time. In the movie 1, 2, 3, he says a line that sticks with you, borrowed from a character in Little Caesar. It really leaves a strong impression on the audience. He's a pro at what he does, effortlessly taking on the styles of those who came before him, and each time he plays a role, he adds his own special touch. In A Midsummer Night's Dream, his daughter talks about how upset she was when he turned into a donkey on screen. It shows how good he is at making people laugh and feel for his characters. He can play all kinds of roles, and he does it so well. As Martin Snyder in Love Me or Leave Me, he plays a controlling character that reminds people of Doris Day's real-life husband, Marty Melcher. He really dives into the ups and downs of relationships, bringing a lot of depth to the character. People notice how similar his character's actions were to what Melcher did in real life, showing how skilled he is at bringing complicated characters to life on screen. Throughout his career, he kept people hooked with his magnetic presence and amazing talent. His work in movies is celebrated and respected, making sure that what he's done will be remembered for a long time. This story, full of movie history, shows how much he's influenced the art form itself. In the world of movies, there's someone who really left a big impression. In August of a certain year, Turner Classic Movies honored him with a whole day dedicated to his movies. He showed real dedication during the filming of Yankee Doodle Dandy, even dancing through the pain of a broken rib. That's real commitment. His love for acting really sticks out in film history. With a career that lasted for many years, he grabbed people's attention with his charming presence and amazing talent. His performances were thrilling, whether he was playing a tough guy, a singer and dancer, or a kind-hearted person with a tough exterior. 
He brought a special energy to every role, making each character feel real and interesting. From the tough streets of Prohibition-era Chicago to the dazzling world of Broadway, he made some of the most unforgettable characters in movie history come to life. His influence still inspires actors and filmmakers today. Truly, he's a legend whose presence will never be forgotten. This is the sign of a true icon whose influence can still be felt in Hollywood today. In the exciting era of the 1920s, he starred as Eddie Bartlett alongside his close pal Frank McHugh, who played Danny. Their on-screen partnership was remarkable, and they shared the spotlight in 11 films together. He was recognized as the 45th greatest movie star of all time by Empire Magazine in October 1997. One unforgettable moment was his portrayal of Tom Powers in The Public Enemy, especially the scene where a grapefruit was involved. This scene became so iconic that even after the movie, people would send him grapefruits when he dined out, which he took in good humor. He had a special knack for bringing depth and charm to his characters, which made him beloved by audiences for many years to come. In 1974, he received the American Film Institute Life Achievement Award. His paternal grandparents and maternal grandmother were all of Irish descent, and his maternal grandfather was from Norway. As he told an interviewer shortly before his death in 1986, his mother's father, his grandpa Nelson, was a Norwegian sea captain, but when he tried to investigate those roots, he didn't get very far, for his grandfather had apparently changed his name to another one that made it impossible to identify him within the rest of the population. He portrayed Rocky Sullivan in Angels with Dirty Faces, the sixth of nine films he made with Pat O'Brien. In a bustling New York City neighborhood, he shared a building with famous folks like Margaret Hamilton and Jimmy Fallon. He played a character named Eddie Bartlett in a movie called The Roaring Twenties, taking inspiration from a guy named Mo Snyder who helped promote a singer named Ruth Edding. Later on, he acted as Snyder again, this time opposite Doris Day in a movie called Love Me or Leave Me. He also played a guy named George M. Cohan in two different movies, Yankee Doodle Dandy and The Seven Little Foys. His acting skills were really good, bringing these characters to life in a way that made people feel like they were right there in the story. He was super popular and left a big impact on the movie world. His talent made him famous and loved by many. He once claimed that problems with horse butch halls had convinced him to retire from acting. Drawing on his memories of growing up in New York's Yorkville, a tough ethnic neighborhood on the Upper East Side, just south of Spanish Harlem, he portrayed Rocky Sullivan in Angels with Dirty Faces. His main inspiration was a drug-addicted pimp who stood on a street corner all day hitching his trousers, twitching his neck, and repeating, What do you hear? What do you say? Those mannerisms came back to haunt him. He later wrote in his autobiography, I did those gestures maybe six times in the picture. That was over 30 years ago, and the Impressionists have been doing me doing him ever since. He was named the 8th greatest actor on the 50 greatest screen legends list by the American Film Institute. In the peaceful gate of Heaven Cemetery in Hawthorne, New York, a talented actor found his final resting place. He's best known for playing George M. Cohan in the famous movie, Yankee Doodle Dandy. He worked alongside Pat O'Brien in nine films, including Here Comes the Navy and Angels with Dirty Faces. Their on-screen chemistry was fantastic, making their movies memorable for audiences. These films aren't just entertaining, they've also left a lasting mark on movie history. Even after his passing, his influence on cinema continues to be felt, reminding us of the magic of storytelling in movies. In an era filled with excitement and change, one actor stood out for his ability to bring depth to his characters. He portrayed Eddie Bartlett in the Roaring Twenties, showing the challenges of the time with skill. In another movie, he used a voiceover to add meaning to the story, blending clips from angels with dirty faces seamlessly. When offered the lead in High Sierra, he turned it down to avoid being typecast as a gangster, which gave Humphrey Bogart a chance to shine. In Love Me or Leave Me, he took on the role of Martin Snyder, graciously accepting second billing to Doris Day. Throughout his career, he showed he could play many different characters, avoiding being put in a box. His smart choices not only helped his own career, but also changed the film industry. The impact of his performances continues to be felt today, 